Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. When the B-1B Lancer first became operational, it set over 50 world records for aircraft in its class. It's the only supersonic bomber the U.S. Air Force operates. And today, we will show you the insane power the B-1B bomber engines produce during supersonic flights. First, there was a B-1A project, seeking to build a Mach 2 Plus capable bomber during the Cold War. Because priorities changed, the B-1A was canceled. By the time Ronald Reagan came to power, the B-1 program had been reinitiated as the B-1B. On October 1, 1986, the aircraft entered service and was designated the Lancer. The Lancer is characterized by new engine intakes with vanes, which help lessen its radar cross-section. It has a blended wing body design and variable sweep wings. Two pilots and two weapon systems officers make up the crew of the B-1B, also known as the Bone. The pilots start with pre-flight inspections in the cockpit before starting up the first engine. Each of the four General Electric F-101 GE-102 afterburning turbofans is started up separately. Without afterburner, each engine produces 17,390 pounds of thrust. With afterburners, that power is kicked up to 30,780 pounds per engine for a combined power output of 123,120 pounds. These engines are only used in the B-1B in no other aircraft. Because of their power, they can boost the Lancer to reach a top speed of Mach 1.25. Small wings or canards on the nose of the aircraft help with greater stability when it flies at high speeds at low levels. At bases such as Dias Air Force Base in Texas, aircraft maintenance is carried out by several specialized squadrons, which are part of the 7th Bomb Wing. Run-of-the-mill maintenance is carried out by an aircraft maintenance squadron, but components such as the engines fall under the responsibility of the 7th Component Maintenance Squadron. Engines are tested and repaired by these specialized airmen, who then also run repaired engines and test cells to ensure they are functioning efficiently. Also known as a hush room, the test cell is run by a senior NCO and several test cell technicians. Inside the test cell, the F-101 engines can be run with full afterburner and are connected to systems, allowing the technicians to determine components that need to be repaired or replaced. One of my favorite parts about test cell is that in the aircraft, um, you have tapes that say red, yellow, green. So you kind of know if something's wrong there, right? But here we're watching specific um, specific numbers. So uh, like on the aircraft, you can't tell the efficiency of the motor. Here, 
one of our main tests is to make sure that we are producing at an efficient rate. Hush rooms are vital facilities where rebuilt engines are rigorously tested to ensure they work properly before being reinstalled on airplanes. These soundproof compartments are intended to contain the severe noise generated by engines running at full power, including afterburners. The test cell contains specialized equipment that monitors numerous engine factors such as temperature, pressure and vibration, providing specialists with real-time data. This environment enables the accurate detection of any outstanding or future faults, ensuring that engines meet all operating and safety requirements. The technicians frequently work under duress and use their skills to make critical modifications and fixes. This rigorous testing process is critical for keeping military aircraft reliable and safe. Once engines are ready to be reinstalled on aircraft, they are taken to the flight line. Installing an F-101 GE-102 engine on the flight line of a B-1B requires several technical steps. Initially, they ensure the aircraft is in a designated maintenance area. A specialist engine hoist then delicately elevates the F-101 GE-102 engine into position beneath the aircraft. Technicians use alignment tools to fit the engine into the nacelle precisely. Once aligned, the engine mounts are bolted and safety wired. Final inspections include validating connections and running functional tests to guarantee appropriate integration and performance before the B-1B is cleared for flight. B-1B Lancers can take off with a maximum takeoff weight of 477,000 pounds, which includes 75,000 pounds of ordnance carried internally. Their engines are designed to carry mostly the weight of fuel and ordnance. Once the B-1B has obtained takeoff authority, the pilot initiates the trim for takeoff button, automatically moving the wings to their maximum extension of 15 degrees. Speed brakes retract and flaps are extended to the takeoff position. With a maximum payload, the pilot must reach a speed of 180 knots indicated airspeed. This is eased considerably with the help of the powerful afterburners, which quickly allow the aircraft to pick up speed after takeoff. Lancers can carry various ordinances, including Mark 62 Quick Strike Naval Mines using a munitions assembly conveyor too. To assemble the MK62 Quick Strike Mine, the casing is first fitted with a sensor and explosive payload.
attached a tail kit and fins are added to give aerodynamic stability. The safety and arming devices are then installed. Finally, technicians carry out functional and safety inspections. The JDAM is then linked to either the rotary launcher or the BRU-56 bomb rack using load-bearing lugs and a 1760 cable. Using an MHU-83 jammer, the payload is precisely aligned with the bomb rack and fastened. The crew inspects the load for proper alignment and stability. On an attack mission, the B-1B Lancer can fly various attack profiles, including at a low level at a speed of Mach 0.85. Ordinance is delivered with a single pass to prevent air defense systems from getting a lock on the Lancer. Ordnance can include JDAMs, joint air-to-surface standoff missiles, and various other types of bombs, including cluster bombs. Joint air-to-surface standoff missiles allow the B-1B to maintain a standoff range of 230 miles from the target. After delivering its payload to the target, the pilot releases flares to confuse any surface-to-air missiles which could have been fired. During the Cold War, the B-1B was originally designed to carry up to 50,000 pounds of weapons, including nuclear bombs, externally on six hardpoints. If required, the B-1B can still be configured to carry weapons externally, such as the larger joint air-to-surface standoff missile, which it carries internally. There's a good chance that the B-1B could carry the next-generation hypersonic missiles developed by the United States Air Force. We have a JASM weapon on the, traditionally the targeting pod pylon on the forward right hard point. So we are demonstrating uh, that the B-1 has the capability to carry weapons and employ them externally uh, for the first time to my knowledge since the, uh, really the 1980s. A hypersonic missile in development is the AGM-183A air-launched rapid response weapon. This hypersonic missile is expected to have a top speed of about Mach 7 and a range of 1,000 miles. B-52s are becoming aged aircraft. Their first flight was in 1952 and they entered service in 1955. Because of their age, they require constant maintenance. Watch out here. Here, I'll hold over here. Get out of the ground. With their ability to fly 8,800 miles and deliver joint air to surface standoff missiles or possibly the air launched rapid response weapon, the Air Force wants to keep B 52s in service for as long as possible. The Aircraft Structural Maintenance Squadron oversees any physical damage to the B-52H Stratofortress. They also maintain the B-52's aerodynamics and other substructures.
With eight engines, it can take up to an hour to start up all engines on the B-52. That is too long for scrambles. For that reason, the U.S. Air Force has equipped the engines with cart start systems, which are short for cartridge start. Instead of using compressed air from ground power units, cartridges are detonated in the engines, which start the engines up immediately so that the five-person crew can get the aircraft off the ground as rapidly as possible. Once the B-52 is started, it taxis, and when it's joined by several other aircraft, they form what is called an elephant walk. An elephant walk resembles elephants walking to watering holes, and the term was coined during World War II. B-1B Lancers are currently the U.S. Air Force's strategic bombers with the highest payload capacity. After almost being canceled, the B-1B persevered and still serves an important strategic bombing role with aircraft like the B-52. These bombers may soon deliver the next generation of hypersonic missiles. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.